Hi everyone, I'm Jenna Rodriguez and you have um, joined us here on another episode of the Brave Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm so excited about our guest today. Um, she is a new friend to me and I'm excited not only to get more, more information about what she does in the world, uh, but share her brilliance, share her story, and and really dive into the the inside scoop of uh, what she's had to overcome and what she's really created to be the entrepreneur that she is today. Uh, so just to, for those new to me, I am Jenna Rodriguez, and I am a brand business and brave strategist, helping entrepreneurs to truly catapult their brand clarity, their profit enhancement strategies, make money in their business, and ultimately live a freedom lifestyle inside of their business and their personal life uh, so that you can really do what you enjoy. So that is what I'm about, and Brave is my conversation most of the time. I think Brave is how you get in the game. It's how you ultimately stay in the game of entrepreneurship. And so let, let's meet Melissa. That's our guest today. Hey, Melissa, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I am fabulous. I'm so excited to meet you and see you and, and get to know more about what you're up to. So tell everyone what your business is all about and give them a little backstory. Sure. So my name is Melissa McSherry, and I am a leadership and business development coach, and I have founded a company called Better Than Before. I predominantly work with women in business, and my speciality is time management and profit prioritization. And what really profit means and includes. And it's so interesting because this has been a culmination, of course, like most of us, of what my journey's been the last uh, eight years now. Right. I've been an entrepreneur since 2010. And my journey actually started in fitness. I was a certified personal trainer. And I started working with a corporate gym and just got the life sucked out of me. I had mm. passion. I had the drive. I, you know, being around people and helping them achieve goals was just my, my, you know, my joie de vivre. And right. they just slowly but surely just took all of that away from me with, you know, numbers and making me work with people I didn't want to work with and getting mad at me for going the extra mile. And I just really was trying to figure out what I could do to be happy and still do what I wanted to do. Yeah. And luckily, I've actually grown up in a family with a ton of entrepreneurs. My father owns his own company. Two of my uncles own their own companies. Both my grandfathers own their own company. Um, but I'm actually one of the first women to do it in my family. Nice. But at least I had that example of I knew what being an entrepreneur meant. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people get that romantic idea of, oh, the four-hour work week and you know, <laughs> right. everything's just going to magically fall into place. And I knew the hard work that it was going to take in order to be successful. And I knew that you know, this was going to be a different journey than most, but it was something that I really wanted to do. So I bit the bullets and at the end of 2009, I left the corporate <clears throat> world and I started my own personal training company. And it was so amazing to have that initial, I have my own schedule. Like I have full say on what to do. And also the overwhelming part of that of, right. I have full say <laughs> what to do. <laughs> like no structure, no, you know, accountability. It's, it's yes. me on my island trying to make it work. And there was a lot of trial, a lot of error. And it just kind of, you know, it was just progressive. But a part of me was always playing it safe. And a part of me was always going, okay, well, I'll just do just enough to, you know, make a financial contribution. I was married at the time, um, you know, just to show that I'm proving my value or proving my worth. Right. And in 2011, my son was born. And with my um, husband at the time, his schedule was insane, trying to, you know, go to people's houses and train them with a newborn, with his schedule. I was pretty much just working to pay a babysitter. Mm. So it's one of those avenues where you go, you, you know, you have to sometimes make a decision that doesn't necessarily go towards what you want, but it works at the moment. And that was my first lesson in really giving myself time to figure out, okay, if this really isn't working, what can I quote unquote sacrifice for the greater good? Right. And sometimes we get so caught up in, this is my vision, this is my vision, this is my vision, that when things happen, we either fall to pieces and completely negate everything, or we say no, and then we actually go down a path that isn't really correct for us, and we get, you know, we get lost even later down the road. Yeah. 
So I decided to take a step to the side because I don't like to say step back. And decided, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's never a step back. It's just if you know, nope. you. Yeah. Um, and connected with my father's company and started doing some medical billing just to stay home, be with my son. And honestly, I knew that I was at a point where I was trying to create something new. I just didn't know what yet. And so that also gave me the time to figure out what I didn't want, which was definitely medical billing. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not my passion or anywhere connected to what I wanted to do. And gave me more time to really research what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be and who I wanted to work with. And that led me into connecting with a network marketing company, and I was an online health and fitness coach. So it was the combination of being able to stay home and do the health and fitness. But the even cooler part, which catalyzed me into what I do now, was that's when I really fell in love with leadership. And that's when I really fell in love with helping women develop their voice in business and develop that, that gumption and that selfish, quote unquote, quote mindset and really giving them the permission and the power and the support to be that entrepreneur that most of them really didn't know they wanted to be and they just are creating something for themselves. Right. And the more that I worked with women in network marketing, the more I started introducing myself, the more I was like, okay, this actually is what I really loved about fitness. Fitness was, you know, a side passion, but the meat and potatoes of it was that I love being able to support someone on a goal that I know 100% that they can accomplish and they just have that little inkling that they want to. Right. And to see them by just merely supporting them and giving them accountability and being that safe space for them to, you know, word vomit and fail and try again. And to see them accomplish that is just like, I mean, it's crack. It's total crack for me. <laughs> it's the fix, right? It is. It's the total fix. And it's so amazing. Yeah. And especially for women and especially in this time for women to see how many are really starting to step forward and go, I want something different. Yeah. And that journey has just taken me, I mean, into more areas than I ever thought I was going to go into, um, you know, I actually ended up getting divorced a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and the evolution and the personal development that I did within this business contributed to that. And in a positive way, it was actually a very amicable divorce. My ex and I are amazing friends. We're fantastic co-parents. Um, awesome. but it was, yeah, it's, it, but it was definitely something that needed to happen in my journey. Yeah. Um, and from there, you know, really, really defining when I needed to end the marriage was definitely a sticking point to me of, okay, if I can make the choice to move in a different direction on my own as now a single mom, I can pretty much do anything that I really want to. And that was, that was my huge aha. And it's, it's such a weird aha to have. And it's definitely not going to be the path for everybody. Sure. But it definitely was mine. And it was such a great sense of accomplishment and independence, but also just more room for me to grow. And I continue to grow in, to this day. And yeah. having women grow with me and bringing women along with me and letting them, allowing me to be a part of their journey of growth. It's just been an amazing, amazing, amazing experience. That is so uh, powerful. And thank you, you know, really for kind of diving deep into kind of where you've come from and what you've come through. And, and it's interesting, it, you know, when you say you're, you're correct, it's like a divorce may not be everybody's journey or path. Uh, but I, I can relate to the pivotal point in my mm -hmm. journey of when I got clear that I could, I still had a choice to step into entrepreneurship um, and that was when I, I bought a, I jumped out of corporate America. I jumped into, I bought a storefront, I bought the storefront and then it basically got to a point one year later where I couldn't keep it afloat. And so I had to close the storefront and then I'm, and file bankruptcy. So there was this mm. pivotal moment pretty quick in my yeah. journey of like, give up, quit, go back, you know, whatever. So it felt like a divorce, you know, it was, a, yeah, it was definitely it's still this pivotal moment. And I, I don't know if that's true for everyone, but I think there comes a place where we choose in, right? It's like we mm -hmm. really lean into and we give ourselves the full permission like you're talking about and really step into the leadership. 
and say yes to ourselves, to our, yes. our journey. And, you know, and so it's whether it's the, the four D's, whatever those D's are, right? <laughs> Divorce, um, death or, you know, all these pivotal things. I mean, it felt yeah. like a death. It felt like a, you know, a, a, certainly it was a big change. Yeah. Um, uh. It occurred for me, but I think that's the point I, I'm hearing inside of your share is, mm -hmm. and you just came to a clear decision of what was best for you. And, and inside of that, you also found the permission to move forward with what you really wanted. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's so powerful, especially for women, especially with all the hats and the motherhood and the mom too, and wife and, you know, all these decisions that we have to make, but yeah. to feel not selfish or it, even if you feel selfish, embrace selfish. Um, mm -hmm. to say, I can do this and I can do it for me and I can also do it for my family or whatever your bigger dreams are, your bigger why. Exactly. Because so. you are the singular most important person in your life. Everybody yeah. else are just amazing bonuses. And if you're not in a place where you can be 100% you and make decisions to make you a better person, you're not going to be able to you know, attend to anybody else. And we hear that all the time of, when you're in the airplane, they always say, put your, you know, put your mask on first right. and then help others. And all of us are like, yeah, yeah, we get it. We get it. But when you're at that point of you had this idea of what you thought your life was going to be, you grew up mm -hmm. with this idea, whether it's, you know, mm -hmm. traditional, non-traditional, whatever. And when that literally just shoots to the crapper, yeah, and it, it is, it's a grief. You have to grieve that moment of, okay. Not only are you grieving that an idea is done, which, not, you know, most endings are pretty sad. Right. They're sad. Um, yeah. But, but have that permission to be like, okay, this is what I learned. Now what do I do? And taking that gift of a new chapter. And not only is it a new chapter, you can start it scotch free. Because you've got, I mean, for me, it was like, okay. I am now, this is a new version of me. I am now a single mom. Of course, I've never been one of those before. I've been yeah. single in, you know, 15 years. I hadn't been single as this version before, which was exciting right. to me. So finding those gifts of, yeah, when you, when you have an idea and it doesn't work out, that doesn't mean the whole thing is done. It just yeah. means you have a chance to look back over and create what you want to create out of what, you, what worked before and learn what didn't and refocus on it. And I think that especially, and that works in all areas of life, but I think especially for women, you know, we try to be super women. We try to have everything together. We try to be the perfect partner, wife, mom, you know, employee, we, or business owner. We want to bake the cupcakes and go to the PTO. I mean, it's crazy what we, how much pressure we put on ourselves to be everything to everyone. And that's, and we're negating the singular most important person and that's ourselves. Right. And that's a huge thing that I work on, especially with my clients is that, you know, business is, I mean, business obviously is important. Profit is important. Right. Money is important and fantastic. Whoever says they don't like money is a liar. Truth <laughs> <Yeah. But, laughs> <Hard> to be told. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, come on, martyr mindset. We don't need that. Um, yes. But it's more than just that. Being profitable yeah. means being rich in your entire life. Being holistically, W-H-O-L-E, right. holistically successful and rich. And that includes taking care of you. Yeah. You know, and I, um, I think this is really great. I mean, I used to be a controller, so I'm all about profit too. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and understanding it and like really looking at it with clients. And, and uh, what I hear is that, you know, when you're in the black, versus the red mm -hmm. on your profit and you're in the black not only when it comes down to the data and the numbers in your business but you're in the black in a positive way in the like you said the richness of your life and your your being a wife or being a mother or being whatever else you want to be whatever role you want to play not just in the business it really you know when you're under this like I was I mean I was under the stress called not profit <laughs> you know not profitable going you know 700,000 in debt and like bankrupt is um, and it was like the best thing that ever happened to me now I can say that um, yeah. it's it's not you're in the red, you know, and it's stress and it's, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and of course that impacted my family, you know, mm -hmm. and my two year old at the time. So <clears throat> I think it's great that, you know, we, you and me both bring profit to the world, like be, <laughs> be profitable people and understand what that actually means yep. and the distinction about it. 
but it's profitability in life. You know, there's a, a life profitability. So mm -hmm. um, uh, it's huge. And, you know, the other thing that I wanted to go back to was, uh, you know, uh, the, the path is not always straight. And I love that you said, and I'm going to anchor that about the, it's a step sideways. It's not, we actually can't go backwards. Like yeah. it's not <laughs> Yeah, but, um, it's that's history, right? Uh, but the step sideways and to reassess where you are and those kind of things. And so when you when you made that choice, it's like I did the same thing, right? It's like oh, I had a vision called I'm going to have multiple storefronts and all this is and the dream and the greatness and all, and it did not happen that way. Mm -hmm. It completely sideswiped me a little bit, and I had to turn sideways. And and yet now I'm like, thank goodness, you know. Um, what was the emotional process? And I mean, if you can really tap into it and recall when you saw where you had to kind of give up that vision and that great mm -hmm. dream of like, Oh, I'm a personal trainer. And I'm like, this is what I'm doing. And this is what mm -hmm. I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it in a big way. And then you had to kind of side set step sideways. What was that emotional process? Cause after hindsight's great, but when you're right. in it, right. And there's someone maybe watching that's in it and going, I'm scared to death to like even look at this. So what, mm -hmm. what, tell us more about that. That was probably, I mean, I'm just going to be deadpan honest. That was yeah. probably one of the hardest times emotionally in my life. Yeah. Because it's yeah. that, you know, if, if you're, if you've been through childbirth and if not, don't worry, I'll explain it in a better way, <laughs> but it's literally that pain of transition. Yes. I mean, that's the most painful part, and that goes in, in life when you're transitioning from one person to another, when you're trans transitioning from, you know, your corporate job to now your entrepreneurial side. Right. There is a pain and a grieving process with that. And again, I was kind of floating along on my own. I, I didn't have any friends that were entrepreneurial. Right. Um, you know, I, I love my father, but that's not really a conversation. We really had a lot. Um, so I felt really lost and alone and isolated for a long time. And it was really trying to figure out who I could talk to, to get this out because we have so many internal conversations with ourselves. Yeah. And the thing with that all, is, day, all day long. <laughs> exactly. I mean, being a solopreneur, it's like you have, I, I always love the meme or it's like, of course I talk to myself. I'm a, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. They're called business meetings. Like, <laughs> That's my board of directors up there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They're not always that's giving why, me That's why advice. I actually talk out loud because it just makes me feel better. So where my yeah. sister actually just ignores me now because he knows I'm just talking to myself. That's right. Um, but when you're in that moment, when you're in that just total gray, foggy area, the conversation becomes circular. And that was hap that's what happened to me. It was circular in my head and just getting, I was creating this enormous monster underneath my bed. And it was all me. It was all right. just me letting it fester and not thinking I had any outlets to resolve this. Mm. And that's when I really started digging into personal development. Now, if you would ask me about personal development six years ago, I would have been like, no, like I'm, I don't high five strangers. I don't want to like hug myself, you know, <laughs> like, you know, I, cause I grew up with like that Susan yeah. power, like, yeah, like I, that's wasn't me. I'm, I'm very outgoing person, but I'm also very introverted at times. And I didn't really know how that was going to help me. Um, until I went to a conference with a networking company that I was with and Darren Hardy spoke, he's the uh, author of the compound effect and um, yeah. he's the editor in chief of success magazine. And I was just enthralled. I mean, I didn't take one single note because I was just completely attached to every single thing. It was like he was talking to me in this room of 25,000 people. And I instantly got the book, The Compound Effect. I read it from cover to cover in probably three days, bawled my eyes out, and realized that the biggest obstacle in everything in my life was me. Yeah. And that, again, I have a choice. I have this say and those moments of you know of stopping myself we're done because I it, it's not anybody else's fault it's not financial you know it's not because I don't have enough money it's not because I have a son it's not because of this that the other it's because I'm just instantly saying no without even giving myself a chance that's right to invest in myself yeah and that's what really was the huge light bulb moments and I never had that before. And then when I started talking more about it on my Facebook page, because I'm like, Hey, if I'm going to talk to anybody, I might as well just get it out. And then whoever can connect with me can connect with me. 
I started reaching out to more people and finding, you know, people in the same spot. And I realized how amazing it is to share your journey with people. Right. You know, so many of us, especially with how saturated social media is, we don't take advantage of really what a gift it is. We yes. take more advantage of, oh, look at her perfect hair. Or, look, oh, she just did this. Or, you know, we start comparing ourselves or thinking that we have to look at, at a certain way or be a certain success in social media. Right. Or for myself, I look for it as a way to share with you really what this journey has been the last seven years. And yeah. it's been up and down. Last night, I went on Instagram stories because I was super pissed that I got my chapter back from my editor, mocked <laughs> up more than, I mean, it was more red than black. Yeah. Like, yeah. You're like, he rewrote it. <laughs> I know, like, do I have it? I think there's like two ands that he didn't erase. <laughs> And it's just that moment of, you know, complete failure. But I wanted to share that because I didn't want people to think, oh, look at her. She's, you know, single mom, getting it done, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, oh, sometimes I look like a crap. Sometimes I, you know, I have a bad day. And yeah. that's what I found was the most important was sharing my journey to those who wanted to listen. Yeah. And once I started doing that and just working more with myself and giving myself more permission for true inward self-care, that fear, slowly but surely, it's still there. Never disappears, which is good because that means right. you're always like consistently. You're, you're actually alive. <laughs> exactly, and you're 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 not you know conforming or just yes. being sailing. Um, right. But it definitely helped me understand what the obstacles were, and when I you know and what those catalysts are. So when I get that moment of fear or overwhelm, that's when I know I need to keep doing it. Yeah. Instead of the ops are be like, oh no, that's my gut feeling that I shouldn't do this. So I'm just going to go over here. Right. So it's finding those triggers for yourself. And it takes time. Everything takes a process. You're not going to magically wake up and be like, wait, I know exactly who I am. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And, you know, it's going to be smooth sailing from there. But it's really seeing where you are now, embracing where you are now, enjoying where you are now. And really taking that minute of sidestepping side and doing that self-evaluation. Yeah. And again, that's also self-care. A lot of us don't give ourselves that permission. We just keep barreling on and just keep going because we'll, something will just smack us in the face and you know, bring us back to life. And that's never going to happen if you don't give yourself a moment to actually look around to see where you are. Yeah, you know, and I and I, I say this often is that brave is is very much about not only believing in yourself, about the resilience, about the awareness, self awareness, mm -hmm. uh, and it's about the vulnerability and the expansion of of who we are as people and and therefore an entrepreneur. Uh, mm -hmm. But brave is you know you brought up the vulnerability part and um, and you know my business changed, let alone my, my human connection, my ability to connect with people when I got more vulnerable. And mm -hmm. I'm still working on that. You know, there's still moments it's like, oh, this social media, <laughs> you know? oh, yeah. and you know, how real do I get? And, um, and yet, you know, people want to know that we're just human as mm -hmm. well. It doesn't mean that we're not also experts or also, you know, brilliant or, you know, all those things. Yeah. Um, but that there's a relatedness to not everyone, not every minute is like, you know, always straight on, you know, and a hundred percent and go, mm -hmm. go, go. But there's moments where you have a book that's completely chopped up <laughs> and, and you just, go, you know, breathe, right? Yeah. <laughs> For, and, you you know, have a couple of curse words, you're like, oh, and then. <laughs> Little Take choice breath. words in there, right. but um, but yeah, it makes us real. And it's interesting, you know. I know for me, personal development is humongous. Like it's huge. I've been I've been on a personal development since I was fifteen, uh, but really stepped into it in a big way. Um, and about eight years ago, like really connected to it mm -hmm. and took a hunt. Like you said, you that we always have choice, and it's not outside of us. It's not the excuses or the reasons or the son or the, you know, um, any of money, any of that. And, it, and that too is where I, it was a pivotal, pivotal change for me as well as taking a hundred percent responsibility mm -hmm. for how it all shows up, mm -hmm. you know? And I think those that it's like, Oh, I have kids. I can't do that. I have to take care of them. You know, what about do it too? You know, it's like show them that they, you know, be the example while they're, while you're raising them. Mm -hmm. Not wait till they're off to college and then go find yourself, you know, yeah. like 
be inside of the journey while they're with you so that mm -hmm. they, they're going to make it mean whatever they make it mean anyway. We don't really have full control over that. Right. And, you know, but we can be the influencer. We can be the example. We can be our best selves. And mm -hmm. that's what they're going to get, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's our children or whether it's our clients or what have you. So I just really love that you brought that through. Um, this conversation is that vulnerability piece. And, and, you know, putting yourself out there on social media can be a little scary. I don't know if mm -hmm. you at least for me, <laughs> I'm like, here's a moment right now we're putting ourselves out there. Um, but it gets easier, first of all. And if I can, and I, I, I'm, I don't know how you feel, but it's like, if I can change one person's life by this, by this, this podcast, yep. you know, this show or this message or this conversation, or just inspire them to keep moving, even when the book is completely chopped up, then, um, you know, then they're in the right space. Like we get it, yeah. you know? So Definitely. Yeah, definitely brave. I see you're brave all the way through your journey and your story. And I'm so glad you said yes to yourself. You know, like that is just so powerful. Uh, and I think it's the place we have to start is mm -hmm. when we keep saying yes to everybody else and not mm -hmm. really lean into us, you know, and, mm -hmm. and our own. And so what, what, one other question is, what do you, what would you define brave as? Like, how do you see it? I've given mine, but what's yeah. yours? <clears throat> no, I, I've been pondering that question because I've listened to a couple of your podcasts and thank you. It's for me, I think the definition evolves, which everything does. Sure. Um, for me right now, I think, I think brave really means that you ask for what you want and not only mm -hmm. ask, but define it and not only define it, but connect to it. Because so many of us internally say, oh, I, you know, I wish, or, well, one day when this happens, and again, as you right. touched on, and we both talked about, that we wait for outside factors to give us this, like, angel chorus of where we're supposed <laughs> to go, when really it's that, that moment of being brave and knowing and trusting who you are in that moment and taking the next step. Yeah, love Trust. that huge thing for me with, especially with being brave. One of my favorite check-in questions um, that my meditation guru, uh, Elise Falzone gave me is the question, what do I know in this moment to be true? Right. And just taking that moment of, because we can get so caught up in what happened yesterday or what we want to happen tomorrow. And honestly, neither of those may even be applicable right now. Where are you right now in this moment? And how can you trust yourself to just take that next step or to answer that email or to make that phone call yeah. or to say no to that opportunity yes. because you're kind of on the fence of it? That to me is brave, owning your truth and, and trusting yourself. I love that. And, um, and I, I'm with you because uh, would you say that trust is, is a, is also in some space faith and you know and and meaning faith in like you you've got this and you under, you know yeah. like, and move forward and in in faith um i don't know if that resonates with you as well no definitely because yeah. i mean this is your business so yeah. nobody at the end of the day you can have the most amazing people around you but if you don't have faith in yourself or that interesting knowledge that you are totally and 100% capable of this. I mean, the point is, you know, that you are, we may not all fully right. admit to it or embrace it, but because we have these ideas of owning a business or starting something new or creating something different that shows that you're capable, right? You're not going to have all the knowledge. I definitely didn't. I still don't. I will never have all the knowledge of what no. I want to do. And that's the yeah. amazing thing. Like we all start at the same square. But I think, actually, I know a lot of us look at other people, and I love the quote that says, don't look at somebody at chapter 12 when you're on chapter one. That's right. Totally. Because we all started there. It's great to be like, that's who I aspire to be, or what did they do before that I can, you know, customize to myself and learn from and cultivate. But it's silly to be like, well, you know, look at Gary V. He's got all this stuff. But yeah, Gary v has been working his butt off for 20 Forever. plus years. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's, you, just, you just know about it now because we have social media. Like, yeah. He's always been around. Yeah. So knowing that having that faith, having that idea and having that fire in your belly and that passion and having that brave moment to be like, this is something that I really want to commit to. 
that's when you know you're capable. And that is the thing, your why, which you hear a ton as an entrepreneur and right. really defining it and connecting to it. That really is what gets you through the day. That's right. Of, you know, no matter what everybody else says around you, if you have that why, if you have that, all right, this is, you know, I see it, I taste it, I meditate on it. For me, I meditate every single morning and it's just, you know, a vision of what I want to bring into my life, what I want to manifest, what I want. I have an exercise that I do about once a month of what's my ideal day and just yeah. keep that in focus, but not blinding me, not getting so overwhelmed by the big picture that I that I don't take any more steps. Yeah, do me. nothing. Yeah. yeah. But just remind myself of, yeah, nope, nope. That still gives me goosebumps. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> and taking it, you know, so, and when it does and you're like, okay, so this now feels like death. So let's <laughs> yes. segue into something different. Got but it. continuously checking in on yourself and having faith that you know what you're doing and you know what you want. You just need to go for it. Yeah. And, if, and I would add just if you don't know how, then ask. find people around you, right? <laughs> yep. but ask people, hire people, whatever it takes to yep. figure out how, because that can stall you out. But if you don't know the why, or at least where you're trying to go, then, um, and I love the fact that you talk about checking in with now, because now is the only real moment. Like, that's the only thing that's real. Yep. <laughs> Everything the only thing else is right an illusion. Now. Yeah, or it's history, <laughs> you know, so. Yep. Um, and making sure that where you, what you're thinking, what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're putting out there is a, in alignment with where mm -hmm. you are now and where, you know, certainly what your vision is. Uh, but I think that's really important is to stay present. It's and on the flip side, stop trying to do it on your own. Oh yeah. I mean, stop I trying to, no. yeah. <laughs> stop trying to wear 15 million hats and learn everything and think that you have to do everything at once. I mean, honestly, that was probably the biggest lesson I learned last year of the amazing thing of delegation yes. and <laughs> how that really is. Cause you know, financially you think about it and you're like, Oh, I don't have the money coming in, which I didn't. And, but once I delegated out and made that investment, the return has been tenfold because yeah. I now have more time. I now have more freedom. I now have more mind, you know, I have more room in my life to actually be profitable instead of going, I have to do grocery shopping or I have to clean my house. My house cleaner probably was my best investment to this day. <laughs> me too. I, she, yeah, <laughs> she will be with me until the day I die. That's and right. Because of her. I mean, literally because of hiring her within two months, I had doubled my income. Yeah. Because I have that space to stop stressing about it. And yeah. we, we try to have, and I'm a dead set independent. I was one of those girls. I was like, nope. Everything on my own. I mean, my parents, yeah. <laughs> my favorite line, I guess, when I was three was, leave me alone. I'll do it. I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> that was mine. And that was like my, <laughs> that was my flagpole forever. And I thought that made me stand out. And I thought that made me, you know, amazing and a woman. And this right. is what I'm doing. When really I was sabotaging everything because of it, because right. of holding on to this idea that is not helpful or you know, helps you grow whatsoever. It just keeps you stuck. And that's why it took me so long to get me to where I was in, now in my business. Yeah. And I, but I also know that I had to go through that to create what I have for my clients so they don't have to, or it's super, super, super short. <laughs> it's, it's a little accelerator. Yeah. yeah you know, and I, it's so funny because, yeah, because last, last year I did the same thing. I, I saw where I really held on to I just had a belief called, I have to do it on my own. Nobody mm -hmm. else has got my back. Like that. Yeah. that. Yep. So, and then that came to light. Like that came from my subconscious, you know, and forward. And I was able to like, oh, I need to look at this because this isn't serving me. You know, exactly. this is really not serving me. And I, um, I certainly, I think I, from survival in my childhood, I took on, I got to do this on my own and figure it out. Uh, but it really can self-sabotage you to, to, to be in a space of have to versus like, you can choose to do it all, but be real clear that you're choosing it. <laughs> you know, versus, exactly. You know, and, and, and it, don't think just because you chose it, it always has to correct. be that choice. Yeah. You can always change your mind. And for me, I know that sounds so simple, but that was like the universal face palm yeah. to myself about six months ago. Yeah. When I I thought, okay, you know, I'm the one that asked for the divorce, so this is my bed. I need to lay in it. I'm now a single mom, and for some reason, that meant I had to, like, you know, take care of everything, which I, I did. 
but, and I remember looking at myself and I remember going, you chose this. If you have to, you could always do this on your own. Right. And literally six months ago, that is the saddest thing that I've ever told myself. And I will never say that ever again, because yeah. there's no way I'm do. I, I refuse to do this on my own. And I'm now asking more of the people around me. I'm in an amazing relationship with somebody who, you know, supports me. And that's because I gave him the space to support me and so right. I'm going, Oh no, don't worry. I got this. It's yeah. I need help or yes, I need you to be here. You know, it's, it's, it's been such a continuous lesson for me. And again, something that I love paying forward and sharing with people, because if that can shorten their time to get to where they need to go, like you said, that inspires them or gives them that little bit of hope of, okay, she went through this. She's right. totally speaking my language. She's looking pretty good now. So <laughs> let's, let's continue. This figure something out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's on to something here. Um, then, you know, then it's something that they continue conversation, whether it's with myself right. or somebody else who can continue on to that path. Yeah, I, I love that. And, uh, and it is, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I teach from a place of where I've been, you know, and it's like, if I can go through it, if I can come out the other side and learn something that you don't yeah. have to put yourself through, and you might have to put yourself through it, but at least I'm here to understand, have compassion and, and hold your hand through it. Exactly. And, you know, and support the outcome. So, you know, it's, it's just really um, so powerful to have people around you that get it and support you and hire the coach. I should have hired my coach way sooner. <laughs> but it is what it is. It is what I it was is. Gonna say another um, housekeeper and daycare were my first two employees, by the way, right? Yeah. That was the first help. And I had to get over the whole mom thing, like, uh, and the wife thing, you know, like, no, yeah. I need people to do this. Yes. And I found a new friend. I found a new friend. Instacart. <laughs> I, found well, I just found Amazon Fresh. Yes, or that. <laughs> it is at my oh, door my by 7 a.m. every Monday. And yeah. Those are my, those are my two major investments last year and they've been absolutely game changing. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. It's even good for like health or for me because Instacart, you just put in what you want mm -hmm. and you don't walk around the store looking at everything else that you didn't right. even plan on getting. <laughs> so. It's like, I, I wish actually Target does have it because everybody knows the Target void. We're, we're saying, okay, I just need a gallon of milk. I just need a gallon of milk. Then you I come home with $250 later and no gallon of milk. And it's like... <laughs> The vortex, right? There's a vortex. Seriously, it's the target the vortex every yeah. time. Yeah, they actually have retail merchandising degrees because it's how they make you spend more money when you yeah. walk in the store, right? So lighting and everything. So oh, yeah, yeah. The keeps the impulse. It's the Starbucks. Away. I blame the Starbucks every time. Totally. <laughs> And now they're putting um, now they're putting wine bars in grocery stores. I'm like, oh no! <laughs> oh, no. I know I've got a cheese, cheese, grilled cheese bar and a wine bar and a beer oh, bar and yeah. whatever else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there, I went to a grocery store in Austin. Um, my my some of my family lived there, and they have a boutique inside, like literally a fashion boutique inside of H E B or you know the groceries. And I'm like, what are we coming to? <laughs> Sure enough, yeah. I have to look at the jewelry and the sparkly things. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's why I feel like here in Chicago we have Mariano's that has a actually really nice wine bar, and all the Whole Foods here are being redone with rooftop bars, and it's yes. just the new happy hour place. I'm like, let's go to Whole Foods. So you have you know a couple of drinks, and all of a sudden grocery shopping, and a hundred bucks later you've got cheese from Lord knows where, and <laughs> yeah, and you're on the rooftop. Exactly. <laughs> It's great. I forgot. Yeah, you were in Chicago. I used to live there briefly. I was a makeup artist for um, Mario Chicochi. Oh, nice. And they have like 13 salons still, right? Yeah, um, they're huge yeah. here. So pretty cool. Small world. Yeah. I love this. I city. forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I like Chicago, but Houston is warmer. <laughs> yeah, I know. So it was 32 today. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive. We're getting oh, up there. <laughs> Well, this has been fantastic, and I just really want um, to thank you for your vulnerability and your story and uh, your energy about being brave and, you know, and, and, and hopefully this has helped someone listening that just gets it, that, you know, we understand, <laughs> and, and you clearly have been through, um, you know, quite a bit to get to where you are, and yet mm -hmm. congratulations on the success that you have as well. Thank you. And, um, and so... What, um, what would you say is the best way people can connect with you and, and really, you know, play in your space? The best way would be my website. So it's melissamcherry.net. 
Um, and I have a couple of different ways that you can get a hold of me. I do have a bi-month or bi-weekly blog blog that is kind of spans a gamut of personal business, but basically sharing more about my journey. Um, that I writing is one of is one of my passions. So I do have that every two weeks or every other week. Awesome. Um, and then also I am huge on Instagram. So it's at okay. Mel underscore McSherry. Um, my Instagram stories, I share my whole life. So again, if you ever need a reminder that yes, this can be a hot mess. <laughs> hot mess. Yes, yeah. we got it. <laughs> I don't always look like this. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll join you on there as well if I haven't already. I think I might have. Um, but yeah, I'm on. I love Instagram as yeah. well. And so this is great. And I know you had something on your site that is a little more, um, you know, something to help build their business or whatever. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. So I have a checklist called a profit prioritization checklist. And I've, I've chatted, I've talked or touched on this pretty much in and out of this um, interview, but basically it's a great free tool to give you the step-by-step of how to truly prioritize your day around you and really help you define your to-do list, which I don't like that term, but you know, I'm a visual person I have a to-do list, but it's constructive and it's really walking you through on getting clear on your goals, realistically scheduling what you need to get done and realistically looking at what really needs to be on your to-do list. Um, so it's a really great resource just to get you started on that clarity and that consistency. Um, and then with that, you do get a complimentary 30 minute profit push phone call with me where we can talk about, you know, what's worked with you on the checklist, what hasn't, what's your next steps. And that way we can continue on that consistency and see how I can support you moving forward. I love it. I love it. I love, uh, you know, gifts. That's always awesome. awesome. I think it's it's an awesome conversation to have and just, you know, um, you know, like I said earlier, you know, you and me both about profit and understanding, but profit in life, not Mm -hmm. time and right. You know, and Mm -hmm. not being in the red, no matter where you are. (laughs) Exactly. um, Mentally, emotionally, and physically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much for being here. This has been really powerful. And if you guys are listening and watching us and want to share with us what you got from this conversation, please do so. Um, Whether it connect with uh, Melissa directly or myself or just in the comments. And uh, we welcome the feedback because we want to know you're listening. We want to know what what you're getting from these uh, interviews. And of course, so how, how we can support you further. So thanks again, Melissa. This has been fabulous. Thank you so much for having me, Jenna. I had a fantastic time. You're welcome. I love it. All right, guys. So until next time, as I always say, let's go get our brave on and I'll see you then. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Bye. Bye.